Hello everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Today I am having a very interesting session on Salesforce integration. With this Salesforce integration session, we will try to understand both the inbound integration and outbound integration of Salesforce. Let's understand one by one. First, we will try to understand Salesforce inbound integration. What do we mean by Salesforce inbound integration? Inbound means something coming into Salesforce. That means, let's assume that any XYZ external application is calling Salesforce. For example, a SAP application calling Salesforce or a Java application calling Salesforce. At that time, we can say it's a Salesforce inbound integration. The first thing we need to consider, if Salesforce inbound integration we are talking about, there is a 24 hour API call limits. That means it's not unlimited. That means if you try to understand, that means there are limited calls Salesforce allowed for the external application to call Salesforce. How this API calculation happens? Basically, for an org like Enterprise Org, Salesforce provide 100k API calls by default. On top of it, number of Salesforce licenses. Salesforce license includes Salesforce license as well as platform, Salesforce platform license into 1000. So based on that calculation, it understand that how the API limits we have that we can see in the uh, Salesforce uh, you know company information page how much API limits we have. So when you take about inbound integration, Salesforce support both SOAP based integration as well as REST call integration. SOAP means if you try to understand it's XML based integration and REST means uh, basically, we consider it as a JSON based integration. So, while we talk about integration, both the standard objects like account, contacts, opportunity, all those things are supported. On top of it, any custom objects we have that also supported. When you say API calls, Salesforce provides out of the box standard APIs. On top of it, if you are not satisfied, with the standard APIs, you can also go ahead and write custom APIs. Salesforce APIs, as Salesforce is hosted on cloud, it can be reachable through any external application available on web or cloud, right? Regarding Salesforce authentication, if an external application trying to authenticate Salesforce, Salesforce provide both the basic authentication like username password as well as worth authentication which is a modern authentication technique like facebook your twitter all those uh, like uh, modern web applications support worth 2.0 so let's i was saying that you know salesforce api calls are limited so it's a 24 hour limit enforced but it's not a hard limit if you are paying add-on cost to salesforce Salesforce can, uh, you know, uh, make available some additional API calls based on the requirement as well. So, as we are saying standard API and custom API, when standard API on the perspective of writing code and maintainability, it is very good to go with standard API because we don't have to write much code. I mean, maybe uh, totally not required coding. As well as if you are not writing code, you don't have to maintain that. But on the other hand, custom API is more flexible. You can create it the way you want it. The most important thing is Salesforce don't support out of the box error logging mechanism. For example, who is calling uh, uh, the application, what data they inserted and all those things. By default, uh, I mean very limited scope of logging, but with an external application logging framework or something, you can maintain that. As Salesforce is hosted on cloud, Salesforce can connect to any cloud application, no doubt. Any cloud application can also call Salesforce. 
middleware is sometimes optional but some of the application which are inside the intranet may require middleware to connect to salesforce but it is not a must have feature middleware is something which is recommended but is not a must have feature salesforce provide the traditional rest api soap api also modern graph api on top of it also if you are doing one time load one time uh, activity with huge amount of data at that time you can use the salesforce bulk api bulk api 2.0 is the modern api which salesforce support the problem with custom api is if you are writing custom api you need to take care of the security that means you have to check whether uh, the concern user who is trying to insert data uh, having the appropriate permissions or not but if you are standard api if you are using leveraging the standard rest api then or you are leveraging the standard uh, partner api the security is automatically enforced for you you don't have to write you know uh, coding for that as I was saying, Salesforce also support Graph API from Winter 21 onwards. With that Graph API, you can also insert multiple object records. For example, at one go, you can insert account record, contact record, as well as opportunity record. So to call Salesforce API, there are already out of the box SDK available in different uh, commonly used platform like Java, Node.js and all those things but if you are using some of the platform which do not have the out of the box SDK or um, you know open source SDK you can also write it from the scratch. This is a, just a high level briefing what I said about inbound integration. When you are going for Salesforce interview this may help you just try to you know uh, gather more information about it if you want. But in your interview, if you know all these things, it will help you, uh, you know, clearing your Salesforce integration interview. Let's talk about the Salesforce outbound integration. So what exactly outbound integration? It is just the opposite of inbound integration. That means in this case, Salesforce calling external application. One advantage is when you are calling external application from Salesforce, when you are calling external API from Salesforce, you do not have that 24 hour limits like inbound integration. But it has some other integrations. For example, per transaction, you can have maximum 100 callouts. When you say outbound integration, we say callouts. When you say inbound integration, it is calling. Right. So for an API call to external system, maximum timeout. Maximum timeout, we can set two minutes that means 120 second by default it may be 10 second but you can set timeout through the set timeout feature you can set it up to 120 second that means two minutes there is no such uh, documentation on what should be the size of the request or the response payload but mostly considering your hip size of salesforce for example uh, if you are doing a synchronous call uh, or, or from a synchronous apex if you are making a call out your hip size is 6 MB whereas if you are doing uh, API call outs from an asynchronous process like batch and all those things or a future your hip size is 12 MB so if your whatever may be your hip size half of that that means if it is 6 MB 3 MB if it is 12 MB 6 MB is ideally a good amount of uh, size you can consider towards your payload. Salesforce can make external call, I mean both using the SOAP as well as REST. There is also some out of the box feature, for example, you can say outbound message. Outbound call is something uh, XML based notification framework to notify external system. On top of it, there are some other streaming APIs also available. For example, your streaming API, platform event, change data capture. I mean, probably, I mean, you can consider these three things are mostly used. Platform event, change data capture, and the streaming push topic. These three things are part of the streaming API. 
but if you are doing a push notification through streaming api the external application need to be enabled with command d command d is something which can run and continuously listening to your streaming events ideally 1 to 200 record for one go if you are sending to external application it is considered as a good payload size while you are calling external application if your external application is sitting inside intranet or on premises then middleware is a kind of things which is required otherwise as salesforce is on the cloud it cannot able to reach uh, your intranet uh, or any api which is sitting inside intranet either a middleware or a uh, api gateway like apigee and all those things will also help you the error handling and retry mechanism is out of the box supported in notification frameworks like outbound message but if you are doing api calls and all those things you have to write custom code or additional um, logic for that one more thing salesforce support is something called virtual data virtual data through external objects that means salesforce is having something called salesforce connect which is supported through o data so through which you can connect to any external database and bring that data into salesforce and uh, you will not realize that whether the data is inside salesforce or outside salesforce because the virtual data will look like uh, you know it is probably inside salesforce to that external object you cannot only bring the data you can also uh, update the data as well the one critical things which happens in every integration scenario is where to store the credentials so there are many ways people store credential in custom settings custom metadata but ideally it is preferred always to use the credential in named credential because then named credential you know you can encrypt and store it so that other people cannot see the critical uh, uh, part of the credential like password or the secret key all those things that's all for today i hope you would have understood at least some of the briefings how the salesforce inbound and outbound integration works and it will also help you in your interview process when you are going and attending any interview and they are uh, if you are getting asked some salesforce integration related question you may get help from this session as well if you like this session uh, comment it uh, i would try to answer that and uh, if you don't like you do a thumbs down if you like do a thumbs up and uh, if you think this session is valuable for your friends and other relative you can share also don't forget to subscribe it will help me motivate me to create new videos thanks for your time thanks for watching this video have a great day